Look, this was rather remarkable. I felt that if it didn't do a billion, the stock could be down five. That's how it, but of course it then does 1.2. Bob Iger did something, I don't actually don't know any other CEO ever did something like this, which is that he really hid what was going to happen, what his plan was, and he revealed his plan right when this movie was coming out. So if you sold, you missed the whole idea that there are now, think of the most t telling thing was how much of the weekend they owned. I mean, that is, imagine if you did, let's say, half the weekends you owned. They have the ability now to do that. And it's changed how you value the company. We were also worried about Disney Plus. We forgot that they have these franchises that literally don't, you don't even put a movie up against. Think about it, if you're in another movie studio. Oh, geez, that's an Iger weekend. I'm not going against them. I've never seen that before. That'd be once, maybe. Uh, yeah, David, I mean, having 90% of the weekend is one thing, but we already know they're going to be 40% of North America overall. Um, I know uh, Bammel went to 168 coming out of the presentation. Yes, yes. And I think Jessica Reef, David, is now suggesting three and a half, maybe. Three and a half billion, uh, which would surpass Avatar. And Avatar, of course, is uh, now a Disney property, don't forget, with the acquisition right. of the Fox studio. And by the way, as Iger had pointed out during our interview a couple of weeks ago, I spent a lot of time in LA, um, there's a lot more costs to come out of that as well. Uh, the merging of those two uh, studios, in a sense, certainly of the two companies and of the studio. Also important to keep in mind, guys, is Endgame is going to be the first of the movies that goes directly to the Disney Plus platform. It's not showing up anywhere else. Uh, and so for those fans who want to watch it over and over and over again, that's where it's going to be available. It's these kinds of franchises that are going to potentially make it uh, a must-have, at least, for fans of the Marvel Universe. You know, one of the things, I, when Iron Man was made, uh, they came to me and said, listen, we need you to do something mad money about Stark Industries. And I, I said, Iron Man, what the hell? Who knows? I, sure. I, and I punch a button, I do this thing, and they give me a hat. And I'm like, wow. I mean, everyone else made millions. But what's interesting, David, when I was talking this weekend to people at the White House Correspondent, many people started again. They started watching the series again so that they were caught up. I mean, this really is uh, one of the most culturally sticky things that I can, I've come across. Yeah. Uh, and it will continue to be because they're obviously going to continue to pump out a lot more within the Mar MCU, I think is what they call it, the Marvel Comic Universe. Uh, the MCU. MCU. How are you in yeah, the MCU, MCU, Jim? Absolutely. Yeah, the MCU. I don't know. That's micro, so. It was a microcontroller on Friday. Now it's that. <laughs> I like the MCUs. They were going up. It's that. Selling it's it's all over. MCU, you know, baby. After, yep. after Pixar and all the grief they got for the price, uh, after Lucasfilm and all the grief they got for the price, after Marvel and all the grief, uh, which do you think was the biggest payoff? This is starting I to look like the best. This the one biggest is, but what's incredible is, is that the stock had flatlined for three years, and now it just made up for, yeah. I mean, it basically made up in three days for everything it missed in three years. This is a big cap stock. This is not, it didn't get a takeover bid. It did not do some sort of self-help breakup. <laughs> Uh, David, I've got to tell you, can you recall a time when there was an analyst meeting that then changed everybody's view of a stock like this has happened? Not, not in recent memory, no. Uh, I mean, there was a great deal of focus going in, but, Jim, they, they certainly delivered on, the, I guess, the, bet, the highest hopes of, of their investor base. You're right. To the point where I've made this point. Remember the auction of the RSNs that I've been following off and on? Yeah. I haven't really done much on TV about it. I mean, it, it, however it ends up there, whether it's Sinclair or somebody else, the number that they're going to get for those RSNs, even, when you, even with the Yes Network thrown in at a decent price, is going to be horrible. Uh, and yet nobody cares. Nobody cares. No. What it does is it makes the Fox deal even more expensive. But you know what? Investors have already said it was great. We love it. <laughs> and they've moved on, uh, which is You know is what else is buried is Abigail Disney's complaint about executive pay. Yeah, it, we should hold that that criticism out, other than Senator Warren, of course, uh, for executives whose stock went down. Uh, th this man's created tremendous well. I, I, I just seems, it seems ill-advised course by her. But then again, it's her company versus mine. My name is Disney. <laughs>